everyone. This is three questions with Weston Kieschnick. I remember even how to say your name, man. Dude, that's that's an improvement. That's an improvement. Got it. I, we actually were on this podcast, you know, a long time ago. Uh, you know, we, I, you were one of my first guests, and so it's good to have you back. And you actually, I'm really excited, Weston, because you got a new book that's out. It's called The Educator's Atlas. And Thanks, you, told, like, you told me you've been working on this, like, it's not just a couple of weeks. No. It's been 15 years. So tell before we get into three questions, tell everyone about the book. Congra- congratulations, by the way. And, hey, not only congratulations, but super congratulations. <laughs> You have upgraded this podcast so much since the last time I was on. <laughs> I have. I have, okay. I say this every time. I have like a hundred. Like I literally could have a hundred thousand sounds, but that's yeah. the one. That's and, the and, one. And it's still fiend, 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 fiend. <laughs> You know what? That's a good. That's a good go to. If you got to pick one, yeah. No, thank you. You, uh, you felt better that. as soon as I gave you the shout out horn, right? For the you book. saw me smile immediately. It's just like an immediate <laughs> right. lift. Immediate lift. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm super excited about the book. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, this one has been 15 years in the making. Um, it's, it's not just one of those things I'm like, Hey, I think this is a pretty good idea. It's one of those things that I've had to refine my thinking around for a really, really long time. Uh, and so it's just about what really engaging educators do differently, you know, to uh, steal a page out of Todd Whitaker's book there is just like, I, you, you know, like we get the luxury of being in so many schools and so many districts and seeing so many incredible educators. And it's like, you know, people throw this word engagement at us all the time. They tell educators like, oh, be more engaging. Well, that's, that's great in theory. And like, what does that mean for us? Like, what does it look like, sound like, feel like? And, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm of the mindset that when you take a look at engagement, like engagement's formulaic. If you take a look at the most engaging experiences of your life, right? The things that you seek out, the music that you listen to, the books that you read, the jokes that you hear, the movies that you watch, like in all likelihood, like people are following engagement formulas, mm-hmm. right? So when you look at movies like Star Wars or The Matrix or Harry Potter, like all of those movies follow the hero's journey. Why? It's an engagement formula. When you look at joke structure, there is a setup. Uh, there's an assumption the audience uh, uh, forms. There is a moment where the comedian will shatter the assumption and then bam, deliver the punchline. Like mm-hmm. that's joke structure. It's formulaic. Look at every Disney movie you've ever seen, right? Every Disney movie you've ever seen follows free tags pyramid, right? There's exposition. There's an inciting incident. There's a rising action. There's a climactic moment, a falling action, and then a resolution. Every Disney movie you've ever seen follows that. And so I've been interested in like, what's the educator's version of, free tags pyramid or the hero's journey. Uh, and after watching teach, I'm embarrassed. It took me 15 years, but it's just probably cause I'm not that smart, George. Like, like this is, this is what educators do. You know, they walk in, they capture and hold student attention. They're masters of the transitional phrase. They teach a clear and succinct lesson. There's followed by some sort of activity. And then there's a summation, right? Cause learning is tied to emotion right. and kids need to leave feeling something better than what they walked in with. So I like I I know bold school and we'll link to 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 all your books down. I know bold school is something you're very very proud of, and uh, it it is had an incredible reception. I I don't know if this is maybe presumptuous here. This feels like this is like like the like really yours. Like this feels like a little bit different for this book and your excitement for this. And I don't know. Am I am I off there? Or tell me more about that. No, 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 you're not off because it in, engagement is something that's so near and dear to my heart. Mm-hmm. I I stumbled up the stairs in terms of blended learning and becoming a blended learning expert, right? Like that was just, I, it was a right place, right time. It was something I was passionate about, but it wasn't a passion I, I, I longed for or sought after, right? right? Engagement is like you and I have had so many conversations Uh, just sort of like from a speaker's perspective, like about the craft of speaking and teaching. I love to talk about it. Like, I love to talk about that with you in the same way, like Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David love to talk about the craft of comedy. And so, yeah, it's something I'm super passionate about, always have been. And so this one, this one's near and dear to my heart. And so, okay, so I'm doing this. Educators out, as you see it right here. Yeah. You you know, right, right here. This is the cover. Yeah. It is available down there. If you're watching, it's, there it is. And that's good. Yeah, keep pointing it out. Magic, it out. Yes. magic. What you're seeing right now. I know that's so good. <laughs> you you have upgraded. It, it's really remarkable. 
Right. It's really remarkable. It is remarkable. So yeah. hey, I'm really excited. And everyone check it out. Weston, if you've never seen him speak, I highly recommend. Uh, I remember actually the first time I saw you speak, we were in Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, and you were absolutely incredible. And so if you can, if you can give us like half of that in this book, it is going to be well worth the price. So uh, I know I'm really excited about it. And I know that you, when, when I met you and I listened to your story um, and, and, and what you talked about, you had so many great stories about educators. And so this is, I know this is going to be a hard one for you because I know you've been influenced by so many teachers, you know, in your career. So when you think of a teacher who really inspired you, uh, who's one that you think of and why? Uh, Kirk Datto. It comes immediately to mind. And what's interesting was like he wasn't my teacher as a, you know, elementary, middle or high school student. He mm -hmm. was my cooperating teacher as a student teacher. And uh, he was he was so influential. I mean, I, I talked about him in bold school. Yeah. Um, he was so influential because. I, I tell this story of when I taught my first ever lesson and it was, it was a complete disaster. It was a complete disaster. And he didn't, he didn't blow smoke. He was, he gave me this profoundly wonderful gift that I didn't understand at the time. He literally, after I was done, it was a disaster. I was soaked in sweat. I knew it was a disaster. Kids leave the room. He folds his arm. He looks at me and he's like, well, that was shit. Right. Like, <laughs> and, and just like told me exactly what I needed to hear. Right. He didn't lead me to believe that something was bad was actually good. And then let me just continue down that path of mediocrity. Like he told me it was garbage, but then he gave me the greatest gift I ever received. He, he coached me up. He made me better at the craft. He had conversations about teaching in the way that you and I have had conversations about right. speaking. It was just like, let's take this thing. Let's distill it. Let's dismantle it and figure out what makes it go. And I'm forever indebted to that guy for that. You know, it's, it's, there's a couple of things. First of all, it is really amazing to to think about how great teachers impact so many beyond their classroom, right? Yes. So I actually distinctly remember you telling this story in Hawaii. I actually, I was like going to be shocked if you said something else, to be honest with you, because I actually remembered the story very well. And I that watched, makes me feel good. That makes me feel like I did something right. Oh yeah, and I and yeah. I watched all the educators that were inspired by that story of this teacher who then probably went on and then they made that impact because of the conversation, right? And probably a lot of conversations they had. And I think the second piece is there is this, this misconception that sometimes when there is a criticism or a challenge on something, that it's actually a negative thing. And I do believe sometimes, you, you, if, you've, if you've ever been online, which everyone has, and yeah. if you're listening to this, you're yeah. online. Yeah. The, re the reality of this is, is that you can pick out really quick when someone's just doing it to rip you apart, to like, yeah. to, to, to lower you, right? And often yeah. to their level, right? Because they're feeling like, you know, as opposed to like, hey, I, I care about you enough that I'm going to step in because we want you to be successful. And, yeah. you know, the, the best people in my career have challenged me like that. And I think that that is really powerful. And is, yeah. it, is, it, is it Kirk? It's Kirk Datto. Yeah, but uh, sorry, wait, sorry. Oh, just, just wait, hold on, Kirk Datto. <laughs> I didn't want to yeah. miss that out, right? <laughs> no, uh, but as a continuation of what you said, like, right. you're right. Like, sometimes the perception is like, ooh, this is negative. Right. Like, we have this infatuation with uh, instructional coaching. Uh, and what's, prob what's problematic is like, coaching is an intensely vulnerable experience. Like there are times when right. it, it feels uncomfortable. There's uncertainty, there's risk, there's emotional exposure. All of those things exist in coaching. And what happens is like a lot of schools and districts think they have instructional coaching programs, but unless you're willing to dive headlong into that vulnerability, you, you don't have an instructional coaching program. What you end up with is an instructional reflection program right. where it's just people asking like, how do you think that went? That's not coaching. That's reflection. Reflection is valuable, but it's very different from coaching. It, a, a great coach will do exactly what Kirk did and identify like, hey, here's what's not great. And here's what we can do to make it great. Right. And, and that, like it, it, there's act, the misconception of like not saying anything is you being nice. Well, I'd rather uh, the nice where I get criticized and I do better as opposed to nice. No one says anything. And then I screw up the rest of my life. Right. Like that, that's part of it too. Right. The, the, nice, the, re yeah. the nice thing to do is help. Right. Not just the rest of your life. Stu the, the hundreds oh, of students who, right. you, yeah, like that. We have to have a sense of urgency about this work. Love it. Love it. Okay. So I know that you worked with incredible administrators uh, throughout your career. I know that we've connected with bit, very many of the same uh, people like, our, our friend Jimmy Cassis and Jimmy, if you're listening, yeah. oh, there. and he is actually, uh, I know that he's publishing your book. 
Yes, he uh, is. Educators Atlas, and you know Jimmy's got amazing books. Culturize. I'll even I'll even throw a link to Culturize down there too. So Culturize. That's nice. Go get Culturize book. Yeah, Culturize is incredible. <laughs> right, yeah. incredible book. So when you think of all the administrators that you've interacted with, who is someone that really stuck out to you and why? Um, to your point, this is such a hard question. There's so many great ones. Um, I'll be selfish and choose. So Kalmar Richards was the very first principal uh, to ever hire me uh, and, and to give me a job. And she was so impactful because in addition to being just a wonderful servant leader mm -hmm. and really modeling what that looked like, she was a pedagogue. She understood instruction still to this day, understands instruction. And so like those two things were really valuable for me to see and experience uh, as a teacher who worked for her. And then she is also the reason that I do the work that I do right now. You know, she sent me to a conference as a second year teacher. It was a literacy conference in Orlando. And I came back from that conference. And you all know, like when you come back from a conference, you have to present your learning to the staff. Right. And so I went up and I did my 15 or 20 minutes and she was super encouraging. She was like, hey, you're pretty good at that. And then she kept sending me to conferences. And that's what got me started on the path of adult education. I don't I don't, Bold School doesn't exist. Breaking Bold, Educators Atlas. We aren't having this conversation without her. Uh, I'm I'm 100% indebted to her. Then is it Cal Calmar Richards? Calmar Richards. Yes. Calmar Richards. <laughs> and, and like kind of going, it's kind of interesting how the, your, your two questions are connected. Is that someone who like, you know, lifted you up, helps you get better? And probably, you know, neither of us. And there, one of the things that I appreciate that you just said and it's unfortunate that not all of us can say this, right? Is that yeah. some of us haven't had great administrators and, and frustrating. And I think one of the reasons that I do this podcast is, is not only to acknowledge the great people in our careers that we've had, but hopefully someone's listening and says, you know what, that's something I could do, right? Yeah. Like, you know, or maybe that's what I need to do more. Like, am I encouraging people? Like, I know, like I know there are uh, administrators that do everything uh, to keep their staff in, in their school. And uh, I remember one, my mentor, Kelly Wilkins, she was actually getting teased a little bit because a lot of her staff like left really quick. Yeah. And they left because she basically elevated them. They went on to other schools. They became administrators. They went on to different positions. She always found something you did. And I remember someone uh, said to her like, oh, you can't keep a teacher. She's like, I'd rather have a great teacher for two years than a bad one for 10. And ah, like, that's so good. good right you know and it's like yes. and, and that and that's what she always looked and and then what happened was that really great educators wanted to go to work for her because they knew that she'd bring out the best in you so i, I just absolutely so i'm gonna give a little extra shout out to kelly Wilkins. Just in case. all right last okay. question and one of the things i appreciate about you is that um, you have a podcast with your wife, Molly, correct? Yes. Uh, you have a, a book that you wrote with her. You have, you know, this book, Educators Atlas, Bold School, Breaking Bold. But you also like continuously learn. When, when you check out Wesson's Instagram, he's got like a ton of tweets or yeah, like Instagram and tweets, right? You take your tweets, put them on Instagram. You share a ton it's of all, learning. It's all the same. Yeah. If you follow one, you follow them all. It's I'm not. <laughs> right. But yeah. the tweets are better. Like the tweets on Instagram because, you know, I... Yeah, they're, they're pictures. Yes, because they're pictures. Oh, NFTs, pictures. whatever that is, right? Yeah, so, so whatever, yeah, whatever an NFT sure is. That is. When you figure that out, let me know. So you are a very reflective person. You're constantly, you know, engaging in your own learning. And, you know, sometimes I think even when I see your posts, you challenge your own thinking, right? Like you're, you're doing this too. So one of the things, uh, you know, I, I really have to know is when you look back at the beginning of your career, if you could talk to yourself as a first year teacher, what advice would you give to yourself now because of what you know? So, so that's a that's a hard question because there's a thing that I would tell first year teachers that I did. And then there's a thing that I would tell myself mm -hmm. uh, that I didn't do. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'll, I'll talk about both of those things. Right. So the thing that I would tell other teachers that I did was just like mentorship matters. Mentorship matters. Find like surround yourself with educators that you respect and who do great work. 
uh, stay out of the teacher's lounge if it is a toxic place right. uh, and just surround yourself with people who do great work and learn from them early and often, like humble yourself. It was it was a thing that I did not because I humbled myself, but just because like this profession will humble you so mm -hmm. quickly when you start. Uh, and you just, I'm a firm believer, not a single one of us gets out of this professional live without some really great coaching and mentorship. Right. Uh, it's, it's advice that I would give that I, that I took for myself, uh, advice that I would give that I probably didn't take for myself early enough is I would tell, uh, teachers early in their career, don't let yourselves on fire to keep everyone else warm. Right. Uh, there will always be more to do. There's always going to be more stuff like, and, and, that doesn't mean we don't approach the work that we do with a sense of urgency. It's urgent work. It's important work. These are people's children. And there's always going to be more, uh, you know, like we're not replacing great teachers at a fast enough rate to afford to lose the ones that we have. Like we have to figure out a way to find a better balance for ourselves as educators. The profession needs to figure out a better way to find a balance for us. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's my other piece of advice. Don't let yourself on fire to keep everyone else warm. Spend time with people who you love, people who love you uh, and make sure that you are finding time to close the lid. That stack of papers is going to be there in the next day. Like have dinner with your family. You got to do stuff like that. It, it matters. Yeah. And that, that, that to me is like, we're, I was just actually talking to a, a group of new educators and that was actually, you know, part of my advice is that have a life. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it too, is you're more appealing to students if they see that you're, you know, not just a teacher. And I don't mean that like, like, oh, you're just a teacher to diminish the job, but no, more a teacher. Like one of the things I've always said is I am not a teacher that happens to be a person. I'm a person that just happens to be a teacher. Right. Yeah. And so I'm more well-rounded than that. There's things that, and I bring a lot of those elements into my life that help me connect with students. And I think that, uh, that that's something you do very well. I am, uh, very proud of you for putting on another book. I know that you're doing some incredible stuff. So everyone, if you want, check out Educators Atlas. You can see it right here. There it is. And it is linked down below. So uh, impressive. Right? Hey, actually, Weston, how about this? I'm going to put you on the spot. If anyone listened to this whole thing, okay? Ooh. If you comment, will you, would you? I'm putting you on the spot. So okay. you cut this out if you, if you don't want it in here. Will you give three signed copies to people if they comment down below let's go five hey, hey. I'll, raise, I'll raise the stakes Get it. <laughs> okay so go five comment let's see so give me give me a, something they should comment on and five signed copies to people in the comments below so if you're listening to this on uh on anywhere that you have to do it on youtube so you got to go over to the youtube okay yep. so what's what's the thing that you want them to comment on maybe a teacher that inspired them uh, comment on either a teacher who inspired you or uh, why you think engagement is important for kids. Right. right? So, in the spirit of the educators Atlas. So I'm going to, so I'm not going to encourage you to comment. So you can either comment on the YouTube below. And if you don't want to, you can post somewhere on Twitter or Instagram and then tag myself and Weston Kieschnick. And then Weston will send five lucky people signed copy of his new book the educators atlas coming out and it's right here you see it yeah i see it yeah. Yeah. Right so. there it is right and if you win one you should also buy one for a friend because you're gonna love it so I just agree. right so yeah, hey weston thanks so much for having me uh or for being on the podcast thanks for the conversation before and uh yeah i'm glad i'm, I'm glad we're gonna I, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy for you i know this is gonna be a great book and it's gonna be very well received so thank you my friend i appreciate you thanks for having me Thanks everyone for listening. There we go. Music from everything, man. Dude, look at you.